Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Welcome to The Ray Taylor Show, where I bring you the reviews on the latest movies and TV shows, as well as classic and foreign films. I'm your host, Ray Taylor, and on this podcast, I'll be talking about all things film and television. Whether you're looking for a new show to binge or want to know if that blockbuster is worth the trip to the theater, or just want to hear my thoughts on a classic or foreign film, I've got you covered. So join me every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for new episodes, and let's dive into the world of film and television together. On this episode, I am talking about the horror film from 2022, Pearl, written and directed by Ty West, also written by Mia Goth, uh, a.k.a. Mia Gypsy Mello does Silva Goth. That is one hell of a name, and that won't be the last time I say it, because that is, that's a name that's, that deserves its full, full, complete listing and saying uh instead of just me and god that's just too simple too simple uh so great movie obviously this is the prequel to the film x which was also directed by ty west this movie in 1918 a young woman on the brink of madness pursues stardom in a desperate way a desperate attempt to escape the drudgery isolation and lovelessness of life on her parents' Texas farm. Like I said, a prequel to the film X, uh, which I guess also came out in 2022. These films were made, produced back-to-back, and it's the second film in the X film series uh, and serves as the origin story for our title villain. The film grossed over $10 million and received positive reviews from critics, and who lauded Goth's performance, West's screenplay and direction, and its homage to films of the golden age of Hollywood, particularly The Wizard of Oz and Mary Poppins from 1939 and 1964, respectively. Another film in the series, uh, a sequel to X, titled Maxine with three X's in the center of the word Maxine is currently in development. Filmmaker Martin Scorsese was reportedly very impressed by the film, calling it mesmerizing and stating that it was powered by pure, undulterated love for cinema. Uh, This movie, I have seen X when it was released on streaming around a year ago, it feels like, somewhere around there. Uh, I never reviewed it because I knew this film, the prequel, was eventually going to come out knowing that it was a prequel film back-to-back. And I wanted to review them back-to-back. So that is what I am going to do. My review for X will be out next Wednesday. And I was a fan of X, obviously, and that's why I'm excited to watch this movie, talk about these movies. I had heard good things going in but avoided any spoilers right i knew it was a prequel i heard good heard good things but didn't really pay attention to anything else i like to go into films as blind as possible uh so avoided all spoilers and uh i knew prequel to the original of x all that stuff which i loved um and i love this movie as well i really did so much so i plan to go through and review as many movies directed by Ty West as I can. So Wednesdays, my reviews that I put out Wednesday, generally, if you've noticed, paid attention, how I release my movie reviews. Monday is usually a newer release. Wednesdays generally are movies within a series, a franchise, or director's films. So I will do, like I've done, uh, I haven't done Ari Aster, that's somebody I'd like to do, but I've done other directors that have only had a few, like Alex Garland I did. Um, So I plan on doing a similar thing with Ty West. I'll be reviewing, obviously, Pearl today. Next Wednesday, I'll do a review of X, and then I'm just going to start going through and watching and reviewing as many Ty West films as I can. 
Uh, he doesn't have that many films out, so I figure I'll just keep it to the ones that are available and add to that. And of course, on my YouTube page, youtube.com slash spider disorder, I will have playlists. I have playlists currently. So if you want to see reviews of movies within a franchise, uh, like I've done the Scream franchise, for instance, I've done other smaller franchise generally is what I do. I will have playlists of that. So if there's a franchise you want to know my thoughts on all the movies in that franchise, I've started to compile those into playlists, uh, which you can find on my website as well, inspireddisorder.com, or over on YouTube. Either way, I'm doing a similar thing with Ty West films, and we'll see how it goes. I've just been on a horror kick. Did the Art the Clown movies, the Terrifier series, uh, the previous weeks, and now I'm moving on to Ty West films, starting off with this review of Pearl. So I'm excited to get into his movies, get into this movie specifically. Uh, this movie has such a unique look. I wasn't at all expecting. I didn't know what to expect, but was not expecting the look of this film. It had the, considering X definitely had a look that was far more similar to something like a t Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like a lot of ways paying homage to that 70s horror film look where everything's kind of degraded and falling apart uh rob zombie a lot of his movies very similar aesthetic as well and x kind of had that 70s horror classic type of a vibe to it this movie does a very similar thing looking like uh except for definitely paying homage as i said earlier the golden age of of hollywood with the very clean oversaturated look where colors are so vibrant and in many ways reminded me of Midsommar, uh, the only other horror film that I could think of offhand that had that's daytime. Uh, the colors and visuals are very bright and vivid. This movie, very much so, which for me, I'm colorblind. So when color saturation is set at a high level, I appreciate I appreciate when colors pop. If you look at my artwork that I sell at InspiredDisorder.com, you will see I use a lot of bright and vivid colors in my work. Anyway, I love that aspect of that of this movie. And it's just, like I said, an aesthetic that you rarely see in, ho in horror movies, right? Horror movies tend to be dark, grungy at least. Like even Rob Zombie, a lot of that taking place during the day, but like Rob Zombie films... You feel like the oppression of the desert heat and what desert heat does to things. How it just just makes things erode so much faster and break down and fall apart so much faster than they would anywhere else. And that adds to that kind of uh, vibe. So I appreciate that this movie is different in that very specific way of being very bright and poppy and and looking like it's going to be like a kids movie almost like i'm going to watch a disney musical on some level and it is definitely not that this movie also weaves in the love of movies as mentioned in scorsese's quote of this film clearly see seeing the aesthetic of ty west as he clearly ch chooses th out of these two films especially clearly has a love of film right but also the character pearl has a love of film in this movie so not just the look and aesthetic of this movie and x being clear callbacks to films of a certain time but also the character pearl has a love for movies and movies are her escape mentally an escape from distraction from her life and from the reality that's going on in 1980 1918 i'm sorry her husband is at war world war one is going on the pandemic the spanish flu pandemic is going on at 1918 they are she has immigrant parents from germany they also live on a secluded farm so all of these things make life very unique to Pearl, making it very much 
putting her in a situation where she's sheltered from life for so many things, so many things keeping her from experiencing life and giving her that fuel to want to get out. But also, movies not only being the kind of escape mentally, going to watch a movie, detaching from reality, but her path out of that life is that she dreams to be in movies herself. So in many ways, movies feel like her path. Not only the temporary kind of unplugging from reality but also a potential way out permanently despite the difference in looks between the two films the drastic differences in look of the farm where both filmed takes place both this movie and x both take place in the farm very dramatic look obviously one is like the farm new lived in Versus in X, rotted, falling apart, decrepit, very different. It's amazing how so many shots and re- and locations I was able to recognize. Despite, I don't know, it's been a while since I've watched X. And it's a movie I watched once. Wasn't paying that much attention because I didn't plan on reviewing it. Obviously, I'll be watching it again for my review so I can take notes. But like... While watching this movie, I was blown away. Like, oh, I remember that look. I remember that tree in that swamp. Kind of unexpected, but great. And I, it's probably they have ex- the exact same shots, the exact same angle, but filmed in a different way to make it look very different. But because it, imp- the composition, everything is exactly the same, I, I got that recognition of remembering those those places. And both having, in both films, telling stories about these horrific events that took place on the farm, the location itself becomes a character in this movie, providing that connective tissue between the stories. I also love how both films include this rebellious outlaw nature of film. The idea of that film can be, quote-unquote, dangerous. Showing how porn has changed between the two films from 1918 to the 70s, but how in so many ways it has stayed the same, stayed very much this kind of like taboo thing that exists. But as far as, you know, people's participation and considering it evil, all of those things, I mean, that still exists to this day, that, that, that stigma that is attached to porn. And not only the location of this film providing a great backdrop for the events, but also the time in history where everything takes place, 1918. That being the the year of 1918 playing such, and everything that was going on in 1918, playing such an important role on why this character feels the isolation and seclusion, right? Because in the United States... Uh, it was the final stage of the invasion uh, in, or the U.S.'s involvement of the First World War. The United States officially entered the war in April of 1917 after several years of remaining neutral. In 1918, American forces had been deployed to the Western Front in Europe and were actively engaged in combat against the Central Powers, which consisted of Germany, Austria, Hungary, and other allies. So it's like the war, First World War going on, you also had the, uh, the deadliest wave of the influenza pandemic of the time, also referred to Spanish flu or the great influenza, which we all experienced a pandemic in modern days, knowing that type of seclusion, knowing what that did to a lot of people's mental health. Now imagine if we were also going through the First World War or a world war during that pandemic. Both of these things going on in 1918. And the pandemic began in early 1918. During this stage, the virus had spread uh, extensively through the country. The virus had 
already undergone significant mutations, as we know the viruses do, becoming more virulent and more deadly. The crowded military training camps and troop movements across uh, troop movements associated with the First World War facilitated the rapid spread of the virus among soldiers and eventually into civilian populations. So not only is it horrible, these two things separately, which that's I, I'm surprised there's not a movie made that a first world war movie or a the pandemic move the first those pandemic back then about how the pandemic was spread because of all these so I can't imagine being in the military fighting in the first world war while also a deadly pandemic raging through the ranks kind of crazy. Cities and communities implemented various, whoa, they implemented various measures to control the spread of the virus, including isolation, quarantine, uh, good personal hygiene practices, uh, the use of disinfectants and promotion of mask wearing. All of those things done again, except for the group of people who Say that the, the fragile snowflakes that exist that don't want to follow any kind of advice to help protect their neighbor, uh, you know, same things were happening back then. However, the effectiveness of all of those measured varied, obviously, because of some people not doing it correctly in some areas experienced overwhelming outbreaks and high mortality rates. Let's take a quick break right now to talk about, are you a fan of original artwork and live events? Look no further than the Many Faces series by Ray Taylor and the weekly live stream over at youtube.com slash inspired disorder. This ongoing series explores the endless possibilities of the human face through abstract ink paintings on paper, capturing unique expressions of emotion, mood, tone, and energy in just a few minimal features. Join me every Thursday at 420 Pacific Time as I paint live. Follow the Many Faces series and discover the endless possibilities of the human face. Don't miss out on this opportunity to be part of the action and own a piece of original artwork by me, Ray Taylor. Head to youtube.com slash inspired disorder every Thursday to catch the live stream and visit inspireddisorder.com to browse and purchase the many faces artwork. And now let's get back to the show. Also, our family in this movie lives on a farm from Germany. So not only first world war, not only pandemic global pandemic which i think is a, a bit of a redundant statement when i think of that but also you have a german family during that time and we all know how america loves to treat foreigners especially foreigners that we consider to be the enemy a la post 9 11 how every muslim any brown person that could have been possibly from the middle east being discriminated against very similar for Germans in the United States because in 1918 during the final year of the World War there was significant anti-German sentiment and suspicion in the United States the sentiment was fueled by wartime propaganda nationalist fervor and the perception that German Americans might be sympathetic to Germany the enemy in the war German Americans face discrimination, hostility, and prejudice due to their German heritage. They were often subjected to uh, suspicion, surveillance, and acts of discrimination based on their per, uh, perceived loyalty. So it's amazing how this film ties all of those things together. All of these things going on in America in 1918. And all of that stuff is in the backdrop, backdrop of that film. All of that stuff, the fear, her parents fearing not only of this, her bringing the virus home, but also fear of their neighbors 
finding out that they're German. Obviously, she doesn't speak with a German accent. Her parents or her mom does. Dad is catatonic. But all of those things co combine in this film. So interesting. Also an amazing performance by Mia Gypsy, Mello, Da Silva, Goth. Amazing performance by her. Like, I didn't even realize that she was... I mean, I knew she was in the first one. I didn't, wasn't 100% sure which character she was. And then when I looked it up, I was like, oh, yeah, that was... That's who she is. Amazing performance in this movie. And also great that she co-wrote it. Uh, uh, just so... Like, I want to do, in addition to the Ty West marathon of films I'm going to watch and review... I would love to do a top five on Mia Goth films. I don't think she's done that much, so it would be very interesting to look into the films that she has done. She plays a great kind of naive farm girl, but also very dark, very disturbing as well. Pulls off that kind of tightrope walk. So I'm excited to watch more of her work. I'm excited to watch more of Ty West's work after watching this movie. I really enjoyed this movie. Uh, and... Uh, Highly recommend you watch it. I'm going to talk about spoilers, however. Because there are moments from this that I want to specifically touch on. And I don't want to spoil anything. But it's a great movie. Not only the backdrop of all those things I was talking about. Her performance. And obviously where things go bad for her. Right? Things. It's a, it's a descent into madness in a kind of way. As any good horror film would be. And it does kind of take a while for that tipping point to come about. Uh, but I love how everything's set up. I really enjoyed. And even like just learning the background of what was going on in 1918. Why this movie specifically 1918. Where it's the cross section of all these different things happening. And how that all those things contribute to somebody going crazy. Because we see people going crazy just from the pandemic. Everybody I know ha had a moment during the pandemic where they kind of lost it a little. I know I did. So, interesting. Love that aspect. Let's get into spoilers starting now. This movie starting off, vintage tile ca title cards, which I loved. Obviously, the colors, so saturated, which I love as somebody, co I'm colorblind, so I, I love being able to see. I even put my colorblind glasses on. To kind of get even more of the color. And like I said. It starts like some kind of Disney movie. Up until the point. Up until the point where she kills the goose with the pitchfork. And feeds it to the alligator. Which I think is like the opening of the movie. Where like. Da -da -da, title. Like. Like clearly showing this girl's got some problems. And, and great. And also. Providing that contrast between the Disney hyper saturated color look of it where it almost feels like at any point they're going to break out into song and then for this horrific thing to be underneath where she just kills this this duck this goose feeds it to the alligator great kind of like opening to set the tone of where we're at her love of movies wanting to escape from life drinking morphine like first off wearing the mask which i love seeing the mask uh and i love that this movie came out in a time where we just it's like so fresh after the pandemic which technically is still killing people but nobody cares goes in drinking her dad's morphine in the movies you know gets uh kind of talks to the projectionist who gives her a frame from the movie which is kind of cool, which is a job I used to have, projectionist. So it's like, oh, I rem remembering it gave me all the memories of how much I loved that job working as a projectionist um, and missed that job. It's much simpler times. A job I got right out of high school. Like, you know, from 99 to 2002, when I worked at the movie theater, most of the time as a projectionist. And it's like, oh, it's the best job, it's the be especially if you love movies, it's the best job. And it seems like the projectionist lives in the booth, which is kind of crazy. He's got a bed in there, a couch. He's drinking wine, which I don't know. Maybe at some point in time, projectionist kind of lived in the... Or he is taking advantage of the situation to live there. 
either way. I wouldn't mind that, although projection booths are loud. The projectors, when they're running, way louder than the projector in this movie. And it's also notable, he's only putting one reel of film on there, and a full movie is usually like four or five of those reels or more, because they're about 20 minutes each. So, you... I mean, even more. Four would be short. Because that's what... One of the jobs of projectionists on Thursdays, right? New movies come out Friday. So you'd get the movies would come in on Thursday. And you'd build up those movies. Basically splicing all of those reels together into... And putting them on a giant platter. There's like three platters that are next to the projector. And you feed them all onto this giant platter. Which obviously back then, they would switch reels. Because they had little cigarette burns on the top right corner that would indicate to the projector to switch so it would have the next that basically two projectors they would have another or maybe it was on the i don't it couldn't have been on the same projector so you'd shut one projector close the shutter on one shut the other one up and you would see it start playing that second reel of film made the job far more important to watch and pay attention but also was interesting to see how they portray that, right? If you've done a job and you see the job that you've done in your life portrayed in a movie, chances are it's not going to be portrayed correctly. But anyway, um, and of her watching a movie through the porthole, which I've watched so many movies through the porthole, turn on like the we had a stack for all the, the amps for all the sound. There's a little monitor speaker you can turn on so you can hear uh, what's being played. Watch so many movies through a porthole. And he shows her a porn, which tying both this movie and X together. Obviously, they, they, they're they filming a porn at, that, uh, at her farm in X. Spoilers, I guess. Not really. And then in this one, he's showing her this porn that's, like, outlawed. And how, like, that's kind of what he loves about film is that it has this aspect. It can be this, like, rebellious art form. Then you have the, her dad... Right. His existence is horrible. Putting yourself if you want to put yourself in the worst shoes in this movie, it is to put yourself in the shoes of that dad. Because first off, he's like catatonic. He can't move. He's like he has to be taken care of. He can't speak. He, he opens his eyes. He can see what's going on and he has no control over what happens to him anymore. Which is not a situation you want to be in this movie. But you see her, how she, she like messes with her dad. First off, he watches her bathe, which is creepy in general. But there's a scene where she's like, the second time she's bathing in front of her dad, she like goes to meth with, meth, mess with him and like starts to choke him, right? It's like just how easy it could be for her to just put him out of her, his misery. Very scary adding to like just what her character is capable of. And then there's the scene where she takes her dad while he's in his wheelchair out to the pond where the gator is and kind of seems like she's about to put him out of his misery by feeding him to the gator or at least showing it's like the guy can't move and this is what could potentially be his end. But then his mom, the, her, the wife shows up and in that moment, I kind of got confused. I was like, well, does the gator exist? Because the mom never see, sees the gator. When she turns around to talk to her mom, I was expecting the gator to, to attack and, and get the dad. But it never happened. When she turns around, the gator's no longer there. So for a moment, I was thinking maybe the gator was like one of many things that she kind of get. She kind of daydreams about. But I think the gator actually exists. And I believe there's a gator in X as well. So, you know. there. But in that moment, it made me question whether the gator was even real. But there's many moments kind of where she does lose touch with reality, right? She goes deep into the cornfield on her way back from the movie theater with getting the morphine. Right? The, the piece of film flies out of her pocket. And for some reason, she goes deep into a cornfield because that's where it's going to get to. 
but she ends up kind of getting lost in the cornfield and goes goes to like these the scarecrow the scarecrow that's there and like scary birds whatever but that scarecrow has like this humanistic face and she starts like she takes it down to dance with it and at one point she sees the face of the projectionist on the face of this scarecrow and she yells at it like i'm married i'm a married woman but then she gets on top of it and just dry humps this scarecrow really showing that like she's she's not there again she's not like obviously we already saw her kill a goose we already saw you know we've seen her do kind of crazy things but we're just getting little hints of like this girl is not well Let's take a quick break from this episode to talk about attention, attention all, all Ray, Ray Taylor, Taylor show, show fans. fans. We're excited to announce we've just released a line of exclusive merchandise featuring original artwork inspired by the show. Our high quality shirts and biodegradable phone cases are a perfect way to show your support for the show and make a great gift for any fan. Plus, with each purchase, you'll be helping us continue to bring you great content. So don't wait, head on over to inspiredisorder.com now and check out the full collection. Thanks for listening, and we hope you'll show your support by grabbing some Ray Taylor Show merchandise today. And now, let's get back to the show. And another kind of thing that makes me think the gator is there, she steals a gator egg she like goes into the swamp and finds the nest where the gator eggs, which I, I didn't. I sometimes I don't think that gators lay eggs. It's not something that I I think about. But she gets one of them and she goes to put it in the the loft in the barn, but then she decides to crush it. And while she's squeezing it, she's visualizing her husband coming home from the war. And as the egg crushes in her hand, the her husband just kind of blows up. And it's just another one of those moments where she's kind of lost in her head imagining these things. Obviously, the idea of this projectionist, her wanting to not having her being tied to her husband who ran away to the war as soon as they got married. Right. This projectionist possibly being the way she gets out. And maybe she's visualizing how she can get out of this marriage to go be with this projectionist. To, so he can put her in the movies or whatever she thinks he's going to do. And then even in she has an audition like the church is doing holding auditions for dancers and like this is her opportunity. She's going to become a part of this dance troupe. And when she goes to dance, she is transported into another like fantasy world as we've seen her be transported to again. Right. Gets turned down. And she sees, she visualizes her victims at this point, right? Because by that time, she's already started killing people. And the victims are in place of the judges that are rejecting her, which is just, which two of the victims, her, her parents, her mom. So she's like, sees these judges who are rejecting her as her mom who has rejected her her entire life. And she has this great monologue talking to her sister-in-law as though her sister-in-law is her husband and kind of confessing all the things that she's done and just kind of confessing her feelings and even more confessing a lot like and and like you know as at in every moment what happens with the projectionist what happens with her sister-in-law pearl will just say a bit too much and people will hit their breaking point and realize that, oh, she's not well mentally. And it, it never goes well. When you realize that Pearl is un unhealthy, mentally unhealthy, it is already too late. It is already too late. And she has this great line. It's not about what I want anymore, Mitzi. It's about making the best with what I have. Because she's already killed so many people. She, it, it's, what she wants is no longer in her grasp to get out to be part of this dance troupe all that stuff is gone so now she just has to make she's i'm at this farm i have these dead i need to take care of these dead i need to just make the best of what i got which is tragic 
she also has, you know, like I said, mom issues. Her mom saying she feels like she's a failure every time she looks at her daughter. Tells her go. And t- when she says she wants to be do this dance thing, she's like, you're just going to fail. Right. She's like, you go then you go and you fail. And when you fail, don't come back here. And of course, in that moment, we have the storm, the lightning, the thunder. So everything's kind of this boiling point. And then the mom burns just kind of unceremoniously just thrown in the basement. And again, the dad, the look on his face is like there's nothing he can. He's like uh, he is so hopeless, helpless in this entire movie. And that's the look on his face when he sees what happens to his wife. And sees how his daughter's gone off the deep end. Obviously, he already knew she, when she's like playing around choking him while she's taking a bath in front of him. But that look on his face, perfect. You know, she kills everything, decomposing, f- things falling apart. You know, the the projections comes over next thing you know he's got a pitchfork in the head after just when it's too late seeing her get unhinged and the the saturation really makes the red in this movie pop and you see the red a lot more like whether it's a barn in the background the dress that she's wearing like when she's kind of hit that tipping point you, you can really tell visually after the audition they tell her that they were looking for somebody who's blonde, all American, quote unquote, somebody who's blonde. And seeing her sister with the blonde hair, sister in law, I was just waiting for her. I was expecting Pearl to scalp her sister in law and go back to dance again with her blonde hair on her head. Didn't happen, but would have been crazy. And I did expect that her sister-in-law would have gotten the part. And at first she denied it, but eventually, uh, eventually she did. And I was, I was expecting both of those things to happen. There's great metaphors in this movie as well. The idea of masks as a metaphor, how it's hard to tell who any, anybody is these days, obviously the literal taking of that when people do wear the, the mask because of the pandemic is hard to tell who anybody is but also the metaphorical idea especially of pearl clearly wearing a mask to try and make her mom happy mask to try and and hide from society all these things pretending that she's not mentally fucked up also the pig that the the sister and the her husband's mom brings over and of course they don't take it and they just put it down on the the uh balcony or the patio or whatever you call that the entryway and seeing how the decomposition of that pig over time reflects the mental decomposition of pearl's mental health like it just completely falls apart right the pig left out covered in maggots but still kind of looking normal at first like clearly falling apart but like still looks like it's put together like pearl like pearl looks like she's put together looks like she's not a pig being covered in maggots being decomposed right but then people start seeing that she is right at first the projectionist thinks she's normal and then he sees the maggots this pig looks like this perfectly good pig except for it's covered in maggots all the outside is the same but still you know looks the same as a day ago but we see the maggots we see that it's it's the de- decomposition's already starting as we start to see her mental pearl's mental health start to be eaten as if to be eaten by maggots after the audition you see the pig showing a lot more signs of the decomposition as the maggots are devouring it right just as pearl's character is slowly becoming more and more unraveled and it ends with the disposal of the bodies. Pearl cutting up the bodies, brushing her mom's hair and just kind of chunks of flesh coming out. Right. Chasing the. Uh, 
just the just chopping off the limbs of her sister-in-law to feed beheading her tossing the parts into the pond for the the alligator to to eat and the montage ends with this decomposing pig placed on the dinner table right her fantasizing about her mom telling her that she loves her like just she's completely gone at this point just as the pig is completely gone at this point and then the scene where the husband comes home to and sees the dead parents at the table as if nothing's wrong these dead parents that are just there this decomposing pig fully decomposed pig and she greets him with this like big tv smile and holds it throughout the entire credits of this movie and it's just like a perfect end to this film i i really love the character pearl watching her descent into madness in this film is great her dreams of getting out how everything just takes a turn for the worst but also how being secluded in that way from the world because of war fear of retaliation for being german also the fear of the virus and having to stay secluded because of that you know i think all of the people felt that mental health issue during the, the pandemic that we just went through so it's very relatable in this movie and I'm sure there are people that went the same direction as Pearl. I, I, definitely. Definitely. And I love the contrast between the bright, colorful aesthetic of the film and the decomp decomposition of Pearl's mental, mental health. I love how we see that physical manifestation of that in the pig as it slowly becomes consumed and broken down by the maggots and i can't wait to rewatch x like and see how much more i get out of it having to see having just seen this film and see like if that adds more to i mean that's a that's the best prequels make the movie that follows it even better i think like rogue one did for the first star wars film or the fourth star wars film i don't know I'm also excited to watch more Ty West films and performances as well from Mia Gypsy Mello Da Silva Goth. I can't wait to see more of those. But I want to thank you for tuning in to The Ray Taylor Show. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on Pearl. Don't forget to tune in every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for more movie and TV show reviews. And join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform or on YouTube.com slash Inspired Disorder. Until next time and every time, I really hope you enjoyed the show I made for you. I spent a lot of time and effort into it, and it's always easy is doing this. It's not, it's not always easy doing this, and so many people who may not like it, but you made this this far in the show, so I'm really happy that you made it through and i hope you enjoyed it i really do i'm just glad that you made it and you know i just like thank you thank you new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on youtube and everywhere our podcasts are found binge the full week over at inspired disorder.com slash plus buy ray taylor show merch over at inspired disorder.com have a wonderful day everybody peace out. Today, Today is, is the, the day, day where, where you, you wake, wake up and you realize, realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring.